So let's bow our heads in prayer and let's start with God so that his grace will keep us and protect us and um, we trust his presence to do all because without his presence, everything we do here um, may not achieve the result it ought to. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you today. Today being the first day back to school, you said in your word, we should it to show ourselves approved unto God, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Father, let GPN University impact the lives of millions around the world through men and women that you have called and commissioned to carry out a great commission. We ask, oh God, that today being the first day of school, we declare it open in the name of the Father, we declare it open in the name of the Son, we declare it open in the precious name of the Holy Spirit. We saturate every class, certificate class, diploma class, the bachelor class, we saturate every class in the pool of the blood. Let every life be impacted and let every life represented in school go forth into the world, into their city, beyond their community, and take over the world for Christ. Father, let every necessary information and clue to what and who we were born to be let us realize it in every class. Let insight and practicality of ministry be demonstrated. And let everyone say, indeed, my life has been impacted positively. We thank you for all the lecturers. We thank you for all the students. We thank you for the visioner, Haroya Grace. We thank you for everything that you will do and many more things in today, many days and many years to come. And we give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 I know this is true, but at the same time, there is a, 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 a spiritual need someone on this line right now you are having a chest issue yeah. we decree that that pain is terminated and you are free and healed in Jesus name amen amen all right thank you one more time everyone for being in school I will give a very short opening address um, and um, the lecturers would do the same. And uh, Roya Grace would not be here today except, you know, um, if she changes her mind. Um, she told me she won't be here today, but anything can change. Um, that's her Roya Grace for you. If anything changes, she will show up. But if not, we will just do the former address and then um, by next week, by God's grace, some of us who have not met her and we don't know how we will get to know her and meet her. She is a fun, one fun woman being God put on earth. She will impart your life and she tells you the truth the way it is without blinking. So if you don't love truth, uh, just open up your heart because she will dish it out in a very amazing well. And she also happens to be my mother, and we are very proud of her and the grace of God upon her life. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's quickly go to the scripture, Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 11. I will be introducing after the opening remark all the lecturers online. We are very blessed 
a privilege to have them. Um, they are men and women that has been in ministry for years. And, and you will be learning quite a lot. Let's go to verse 11. This is my opening remark. And you can take some few notes. I will be brief. I promise I will be brief. All right, Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. If we look at verse 11, here comes the reading of the word of the Lord. It says, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, and the herb yielding seed, and the fruit trees yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed he eats. Now look at the word. He said, The seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. The most important part I want us to look at there, it says that when God made everything, God spoke. It says, let every tree produce fruit. And Bible said that the fruit of the tree is within the tree. I'm going somewhere with this in my opening remark. There is something God has put in everyone on the planet Earth, whether we realize it or not, whether we understand it or not. There is a dream, there is a song, there is a poem, there is a melody, there is a gift that is within everyone upon the planet Earth. Born again, not born again. Whether they've actualized who they are, or not, there is a gift on the inside of you. And the only one who can manifest that gift is you. And the truth of the matter is that we cannot manifest what we don't know we possess. We can't manifest, I repeat, what we do not know that we possess. If I don't understand that I possess the gift of healing, I can't be God can use me to heal anyone. I've got to understand that there is something on the inside of me. I'm not just a living being walking on the planet Earth. I am an embodiment of gift. You are an embodiment of gift. You are a solution to someone or to a community or to the world at large. You carry something on the inside of you that makes you unique and makes you different. And the world is waiting for the manifestation of this uniqueness that we carry. So everyone on the planet Earth is necessary and we're all important. The reason why we don't look so is simply because we've not understand it. We don't have the revelation of how important we are. And that's why when people ask, you and me, who are you? Tell me something about you. And oftentimes we feel offended and we feel why should he or why should he or she talk to me that way? But the actual truth is that they are trying to discover who you are. They want to understand, tell me something about you. What makes you unique? What do you carry that could be a blessing to me? And one of the major things that has happened in the body of Christ among us ministers is that we think that we can do everything. And, you know, no, God gave you something. Bible says in this scripture here that the seed, the seed that produces the tree, the tree is within the seed. The tree is within the seed. So there is a seed of greatness on the inside of us. So student, we are in school to learn and there is no end in learning. The more we learn, the more we grow. I don't want to use the word, the more we know. Because you see, growth is in different level. Growth is in different level. So is the glory of God. The glory of God is in different level. So there are people who desire that God should do something amazing with their life. He's a true desire on the inside of 
their soul and the desire that God should do it. The honest truth is that the reason why it's not happening is not because God doesn't want to do it. It's just that we don't understand the mechanism, what it takes to activate that area of longing that is on the inside of us. So we believe that GPN um, University is going to help us to actualize some of this gifting, how to work it, how to put it to use by faith, and many more things that the school is going to offer us. So this morning, welcome one more time back to school. And like I said, my opening remark is going to be very brief and I'm done, is that you carry something. And I believe that you will come with an open heart to say, you know what? There is something on the inside of me. How do I nurture it? How do I grow it? And this is what this school is going to offer you because you will have one-on-one -on -one privilege for counseling. You will have one-on-one -on -one privilege with your lecturers. They will share you know, experiences of ministry, things that we are struggling with and we don't know the way out because we do not know it all. We know in part. Paul wrote, he said, we know in part. So we know in part. So we know that the part that you already know before school, you will know the other part that you have not actually known now. So there is something inside and I want you to feel important. I want you to feel very important that there is something on the inside of you. You represent something. You came from God and God put a unique destiny on the inside of you. And ladies and gentlemen, God is waiting for you and me to make that dream come true. And we have all it takes to make it come true. The truth of it, are we going to disappoint God? The world is watching. Romans 8, Paul said they are waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. They are waiting for you and me to come to the scene and display the glory and the power of God. The world is crying for answers. You are created to be a solution to someone. You are created to put smile on someone's face. And I know that God is waiting for you to manifest that greatness. Welcome to GPN Bible College. We love you. And we know that you will live being the best and you will take over your city and you will make the world a beautiful place if Jesus tarry. So welcome everyone, and um, let's make this a fun ride, and God bless you all. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Amen. All right. Our principal. Yes, sir. Continue, sir. <laughs> oh, um, probably... Uh, Pastor Christiana, you can probably introduce the lecturers one after the other, and um, um, they will tell us the area of the course they are going to do, and then all the students would also get to introduce themselves um, before we close um, today. And I believe Pastor Christiana would also tell us how the various classes would be. God bless you all. God bless you. God bless you. We are a Bible university, which means that our number one Bible material we need. I'm going to um, um, talk about the materials we will need when we come online, but the, the lecturers will give you specific ways of how they prefer to do their lectures. So we do need our Bible on hand at all given times. And our rule here in particular is that you ought to have a paper Bible. Technological Bibles are really nice and they are portable, you carry them everywhere. But when you are studying, you need a material where you can actually underline, you can write, you can leave notes, put stickers on. So it's very important to have a paper Bible, an actual paper Bible, amen. Your notes must be on your side and your pen as well. But 
I do want to let everyone know that you are going to have multiple subjects. So if you are using, if you have only one device available for you, which is the one you are using right now, I, one minute, I think. I'm trying to make myself uh, Yeah, you can't see my face. I just realized <laughs> that I'm not in the spotlight. I'm multitasking here. <laughs> All right. Um, just a minute. Spotlight for everyone. Okay. I think everyone can see me now. All right. So we do need a paper Bible, as I said before. And then the second thing is your notes and your pen and your paper. But um on our group chats or messenger so we are uh, we are an online course university so we will be doing things via um technology so you need to always keep your notification on on your messenger because that's where i'll be posting all the informations as they are coming in presently right now if you do go on the messenger of the admission page and for the lecturers on the lecturers page you will see that I have put our calendar there. I put, uh, we, we will be putting the calendar there by month so that every month we can update it, adjust it according to how we see fit. So we have May calendar presently on the pages. So if you go on your May calendar, you will see your subject and your lecturer that will be having the subject as well as the time the subject is going to be holding. If we are going to be having the meetings from 3 p.m. Italy time to 5 p.m. Italy time. And the various time, according to the different countries, I've also placed it there. I believe um, America to have their own. Um, with that being said, you can grab your pen and paper. And let me introduce you to your wonderful, beautiful, very anointed, very handsome looking um, um lecturers hallelujah Amen. all right so i mute i muted everybody just so that um when one person is talking we can hear it nice and clear so if you say hallelujah i can't really hear you because you are mute but if you want to unmute yourself you can you have the permission to do that if you also want to rename yourself because for example if your device is you know galaxy 10 and three of us have galaxy 10 so we don't know who is who you can go ahead and rename yourself so that we can know who exactly is the galaxy 10 for example okay we have um our first lecturer on board um pastor funke i didn't realize her name and this woman is a dynamic woman when it comes to prayer that is where you really see a capacity and she has traveled all around the world if you go on here everyone here we have a transparent um profile our profile our activities and everything we do is on facebook so we don't have any ghost teacher over here or any anonymous teacher over here the bible says by by their fruits you shall know them so when you go into her profile you will see she has traveled all around the world she's been to india she's been doing so many activities all around the world. And um, she's our mama. She's been in GPN for a long time. She has hosted GPN for us um, a couple of times. And so I want to introduce you to one of your lecturers, our mama, Pastor Funke. Pastor Funke, welcome very much. <laughs> welcome, welcome here. Welcome. Mama, you are muted, you are muted. Please unmute. Um, she is still. Yeah, ask to unmute. Let me. Yeah, there you go. She is still muted. Yeah, she's figuring it out. Yes, Mama, we can hear you. Oh, I think, Mama, please, it's still muted. It's my fault. I keep pressing your, your mute button.
Okay. Is it working? Yeah. Okay, Mama, we can hear you now. Okay. Please increase your volume a little bit. Okay. Not yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma yes, ma ma God bless you, Pastor Christiana. The sound is is quite um let me see. Is it better now? Yes, perfect. Yeah. Ah, okay. Praise God for that. I said, I want to celebrate our great mama, Archbishop Diana. Thank God for Apostle Samuel. Sam, thank God for Pastor Christiana and every servant of God on the platform. And actually, I thank God for every student because I know no life will be the same in Jesus' name. By the time this lecture, by the time this session will be over, wow, one day we'll say, thank God. I have been to GPN University, and I know God will help us in Jesus' name. My mm -hmm. name, I'm Funke Adenriola, Pastor Funke Adenriola, and I pastor the ministry with my husband, Pastor Chris, and we are based in London. And by the grace of God, I've been born again for some time now, since 1983. <laughs> I think that's a short time, not too long. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? I thank God for the grace of God because whatever we are today, it is just by the grace and the mercy of God. And by the grace of God, I love what I'm and what I'm asked to lecture on prayer. I love that. So by the grace of God, we look at prayer from every angle. And I know the Holy Spirit will touch every life. One thing I know for sure, nobody will be under this um under this uni and remain the same anymore. Because by the time we finish all the lectures, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit would have taken us onto the next level because the King of glory will speak through all of us. And I know no life will be the same. Once again, it's a privilege to be a part of this um, uni. And I know God will use me like never before. And I will be a blessing to every man, to every woman. And by the time, the next admission um, ad will be out. Many people will join because those who are in will say, ah, if you have not been to this uni, you have not been to uni at all. So God will help us all in Jesus' name. I thank God for the vision here. God bless you, ma. We appreciate you and everyone that is helping. We thank everybody. God bless you. Thank you for inviting me. God bless you. God, Amen. God bless you. God bless you very much. <laughs> we, so we have... Um, Mama Funke, she, her subject, please, you can write it down. I've already posted it on our admission page so you can see um, her subject. She's having two subjects and she'll be, one subject will be on prayer and the second subject, Apostle, you can help me out. I think it's three ways to approach God. Three yes. ways to approach God. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so that is where we are. Um, that's where we are. Our, our next... Um, our next teacher is um, a wonderful man of God, which I have known since my childhood. And um, I grew up knowing him, and this man is just phenomenal. One thing I love about him is his sense of humor. He always puts a good laughter in your mouth when he comes around. And so he is in the person of Reverend Michael Afari. Reverend Michael Afari. Reverend Michael has been like our, I'll say, I'll say he's like, almost like my uncle, <laughs> is my uncle and his, um, his two boys are like my, my little brothers. And um, Reverend Michael will be um, having his lectures also, and he's having two subjects as well. So the first subject he'll be having is the 12 jurisdiction of the kingdom of God, the 12 jurisdiction of the kingdom of God. And the second subject is- Major, major practice of ministry. Thank you very much. Four major practice in ministry. Four major practice in ministry. 
Yes. All right. So let me introduce you. Look at his very handsome face and, <laughs> uh, uh, and get to know him. Reverend Marco, you're welcome. You're actually muted. So please unmute your, your phone. You tap, tap the screen and the bottom, at the bottom, you see the microphone and then you press the microphone and it's on tap. Hello. Yes, yes, sir. Welcome. I believe all can hear me. Yes, sir, we can. Yeah. Thank you, my 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 niece, as she said, is my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor Christiana, God bless you. First and foremost, I want to acknowledge uh, the Archbishop, Her Royal Grace, for this great opportunity given to GPN executives and members adding us up to this year's as part of lectures for the school, college, or university as it may. She is a mom, a disciplinarian, a teacher, an exalter, a wife. Anything you can think of is in her. And uh, I have to say that I have studied under her feet for 18 good years since 2003. 18 good years, one eight. So you know how it is. She rebukes, she corrects, she encourages, and I think Apostle knows much. <laughs> <laughs> If you want really to learn under her feet and be what you are, then you must have a humble heart and a spirit of obedience to learn from her. Uh, I'm in Italy, in a city called Brescia. I'm in charge of Kingdom of God Mission, Brescia Tree. If I don't expect me to say Brescia Branch, yeah. KGMI, we don't plant branches. <laughs> That's her lordship for you. She takes the branch and puts it down and she calls it a tree, which means the tree will grow. It will supply its nutrients. It will be on its own, manage its own affairs and administration, and it does not depend on anyone. No interference because you are a tree a branch that has been separated from a main tree, which has developed into a tree. So I'm um, head of the Brescia tree of KGMI, and I thank uh, We Are Great for such opportunity. That's about uh, six, seven years ago. That's she and Reverend Dr. Francis, who is a senior brother to me. I, I cannot leave him out. She has, she's a tremendous father. Very humble, able, but strict. And she, she, he, he has a mentorship attitude towards members and even to other pastors as well. So I want to acknowledge her royal grace once more and Reverend Dr. Francis, the husband. Secondly, I also want to acknowledge Apostle, Apostle Sab. I call him the Dean of Faculty. Most of you know him to be an apostle <laughs> or the principal of this college, but I call him a Dean of Faculty because it's a university and that's the name they give to them. Mm -hmm. So Dean, I salute you. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we have been, he has been a very great blessing. He speaks to your life and your life will never be the same if you take it. I also want to tell members or students who are available that it will be of great immense help that you humble yourself and go by the syllabus that has been given. Feel free to ask questions. Feel free to send in questions. If time does not permit and you can just inbox any of the le lecturers they will be apt and doing to respond to those questions and you'll be blessed indeed. 
uh, since we are only introducing ourselves, I don't want to go in much. Pastor has already introduced my subjects of kingdom of God and his 12 jurisdiction, and then the four major practices of ministry. So God willing, next week, if we should begin, then I'll give you a summary. I'll give you an intro to all these subjects, and you will just love it. You will love it. You will never regret of not attending this year's school. It will be of a great help to you. Thank you very much as I leave sure. the other podium to other lecturers to also introduce themselves. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Very Christina, much. I'm done. Yes, okay. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have another lecturer also on ground. Um, he is we she's not around actually because she's um she's a nurse, um, a medical doctor who is um, running her shift in the hospital and she is based in Ireland and her name is Apostle Stephanie. Apostle Stephanie. Apostle Stephanie was once based in the Netherlands and moved to Ireland. Um, I think before then she was in the Soviet Union so you can imagine back in the days when Russia was Russia and they used to do terrible things. The woman was there around that period preaching the word of God, smuggling in Bibles, and uh, she's more than any uh, <laughs> Christian Al-Qaeda I know, <laughs> basically. <laughs> she has really done dangerous things for the Lord, and um, together with her family and her five children, they are serving the Lord greatly. And so she'll be one of our lecturers, but she's not in, as I said today, because she's running her shift. And her lecturers, please, Apostle, you can help me with her two um, lecture topics. Okay, she will be doing church order. One of her course will be church order. Um, in that course outline, you would figure out how things ought to be in the kingdom, and which part of it will be administration as well. So how to manage, put structures on ground um, in your various ministry. So, but I'll let her do that when she comes um, by God's grace next week. The second um, course she will be taking is the cross of the leader. The cross of the leader, every leader, has a cross. Jesus said, if you must follow me, pick up your cross and let's go. Mm -hmm. The cross is a type of suffering. What you will go through in ministry so that you don't think, oh, it's just the devil alone. It's part of the journey um, that we embark on as a result of the call. So she will be doing the um, cross of the leaders and the cross on it for assignment. So that again, I won't want to explain her course outline. She will do justice to that. So the cross of the leader and the cross of on it, what you go through it is quite an amazing course no student would want to miss. So that when you begin to go through, or if you are going through already, you will know that you are in the perfect will of God. So um, those are part of the two courses she will be doing in this school year. Okay, thank you very much. I appreciate that a lot. We will be uh, meeting her next week for those who will be having her um, in their class. Our next teacher is my one of my, I have two big brothers, officially speaking, <laughs> according to documents, but I have a lot of big brothers when I'm speaking spiritually. But um, um, my big brother is here with me and he will be one of our lecturers. He, he, I've learned a lot from him growing up. And one thing I have always loved about him is his constancy in the things of God. So being young, we grew up seeing pastor's children always 
you know, straying away from the house of God and coming back and straying away and coming back and straying away and coming back. But with him, he will always tell me that let's continue to do what we are doing and God will bless us. And he's in the person of Reverend Elect Ephraim Ajati. He is a man of God, the residing pastor here in the headquarters, as well as a pilot. So today we had to make sure we tie the plane, the legs of the plane and the wings of the plane so that he will not fly, <laughs> so that we can have him here with us. He had calls today, but um, he's here with us. So Pastor Ephraim, God bless you. He's rever presently a pastor, but he's a Reverend Elect Ephraim. Is he online? Can I see him? All right, I do see you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Yeah, I think you can talk to me. Thank you. All right. Yeah, yeah, in. You can go. Thank you. If I speak to you, I'll All right, there you go. Hey, with the background and everything, looking all fly. Okay, let's let's go. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I should keep my music. Yes, please. Praise the Lord. So, Hallelujah. My, yes, my greetings to everyone. Is uh, we want to honor Mommy for the ministry and the calling upon her life. We say a big thank you to God for what she has used her to do. I also want to honor um, Apostle Samuel, the principal. My big brother, thank you so much for everything. Such a blessing to us, and uh, we will get to know you. We get to know all of them. I want to thank you, um, Reverend Michael and uh, Pastor Paul. There, I think uh, sweet. I mean, there will be a long story to tell about everyone by the grace of God. And Apostle Stephen that is not here, Pastor Krista. We want to say a big thank you to everyone that is online. Then the word of God, to so God richly bless you. And I extend my honor and the opportunity that the Lord has given to us and to me, especially. Uh, I'm asked to present my what I'll be lecturing about and to go about the fivefold ministry, fivefold ministries. Um, so we we'll learn about. Uh, each, each, uh, uh, learn about each ministry, their purpose, and the blessing behind. And I'm asked to minister on this because of, let's say, I personally, the blessings I have seen and I've experienced in, uh, in this ministry and those who have worked in it. And I was, to all the students here, you know, still use our lectures as my primary example and everybody in the audience. So it will be very interesting when the time comes for us to study all these things. So this is my presentation. I've seen uh, a lot of new people. I don't, I think, I believe we'll get to know each other as time goes on. I want to greet all of you, all looking good. And then I'm seeing faces that I have, I know. So I don't want to call names, but I'm all I'm very excited to see all of you. And the Lord will richly bless you for all the things you in the Lord will empower you, the Lord will encourage you. You will grow in ministry and you will not be the same. Amen. Amen. The Amen. Lord will be the same. Amen. God bless you very much. So that was um, Reverend Elect Ephraim. Um, he'll be teaching again for those who missed it. It's going to be on the fivefold ministry and the five point test. The five points test. So let's have that also in mind. Um, we have been talking very 
widely about our mama and so we'll meet her very soon she was presently in a, a meeting mommy is very busy and i know that every lecturer over here i want every student to please put it at the back of your mind that the lecturers we have over here are having their own ministry organization they are running their conferences they are doing um their classes so they are very busy so to have them to come and teach us here is a great privilege so please take this time very precious and captivate everything you can from them ask them the questions that you need to um if possible make sure your questions are within the context of your subject also what i will um advice is that you should have a book for every subject that way it's easy for you to you know move from one lecture to another like you do in a real school because this is a real school and the last um outline i believe that we are going to do when we finish we will do a virtual class exercise and before mama comes on i want to just conclude it so when she finishes and she gives she gives us the closing prayer then we can allow all the lecturers to have their rest you know because i think we have it's 4 22 we have like about um 44 is it 44 um six yeah 44 minutes more for us to be done and um we'll be having virtual class lectures today was just wonderful. Everybody was trying to come online and I was wondering what the problem was, but it turns out that um, we are we we're using the wrong code. I, I gave everyone the right code, but I was on the wrong line. So we will do a virtual class exercise so that we can practice how we will enter. When you enter, the, you are going to have classes on the same line. So this um, line, the, the first code I gave you, the 488 code, you come on it. Once you come on it, you see um, year one, year two, year three, and then you choose the year in which you are in. And I'll let you know which year you are in. I'll group everyone on Messenger, you have a group. So group A, um, group year one, group year two, and group year three. So you know which class you are in. It is very important that you don't end up in the wrong class because if you do the subjects over there and you've been passed, <laughs> your test and you are not in that class you have wasted your time so please let's not do that let's know where we are going exactly so i'll be bringing mommy online with us right now um we're going to so i'm going to i'll be leaving this place. You, you can be or you can be you can be okay so she'll be coming online this is our um, our our founder and president she's the president of gpn so i want to give you a little breakdown of what it is gpn is actually a platform and an organization registered with the government which we hold um conferences all around the world the conference is held in three parts we have the parts for ministers of god we have the part for business people and uh, people who, you know, because as ministers, we could be one of our profession is to be to do business and another profession is also to earn money. And I uh, like Apostle Paul in the Bible, even though he was preaching the word of God, he also had his business on the side. He was a maker of tents. So he had his own money, which equipped him to do his apostolic work very well. And then the last um, sphere is for the youth. And they are the they are known as um, Jesus Christ Global Youth Festival. But within three categories, we have also realized that a lot of people would like to um, learn. And so 2006 was when we opened um, officially GPN Bible College. At the time, it was a college. And then in, uh, in, in 20. In 2010, we turned it into a university simply because of the capacity. And not everyone can really come into the school. We screen you before you come. And so we want you to understand that before you are here, before you are accepted, you have gone, you, you have been considered as a person who can really come into the school because we do not want to give this platform for people who do not have the same beliefs or do not trust in God or have um, pastors in which they 
you know, they are disobedient and they cause chaotic things in their churches, one thing or the other, you need to go through the screening for you to be here. So if you are here or you've been recommended by a trustworthy person and you are here, consider yourself mm -hmm. very special because not everybody has the privilege. Unfortunately, this year, I had a lot of people come online, but when we did the investigation, GPN has directors all around the world. So I will allow the directors to go and check who they are. Some of them will say they have ministries. When you go there, the ministry is a Facebook ministry. Practically, the members are on Facebook, but they are showing the congregation of someone else preaching on someone else's pulpit. The story is not the same. And so please take it seriously, what you are doing over here. The classes, we can, we go all the way up to, um, to PhD level. And so you can continue from year one and gradually go from your way up. Within five years, you can do your PhD level. And one thing too, I want us to also put into consideration is that not everyone completes their course. Please, we have plus this um, plus this particular meeting is a total of 20 weeks, so 20 Saturdays. And out of the 20 Saturdays, please, if you miss more than five, if you do not come to class and you miss more than five lectures, it's going to also impact your total score. You will have periodic test, which is Saturday by Saturday. You have a test. Your teacher will give you your test according to the subject, which you will answer. And how you will answer is that we will, you either post it to them via email or you give your answer to them directly on Messenger. Whichever one is easier, is easier for you. And then when you finish the year, we will have a final class examination that comprises of everything you have studied. And so your score will let you know whether you are pass or not. Attendance is one of them. Performance is one of them. Interaction is one of them too as well. So let's put it, write it down. Attendance, interaction, and performance. Okay, and because we want you to be at your best. And the last thing is that when you are done, then now we can give you your certificate level, your certificates. Once you pass, you can have your certificate um, as well. This year, we are not going to hold a physical graduation ceremony because we all know that Rona Rona is walking around for now. So everybody's trying to get, you know, vaccinated or what whatnot so that they can clear out the you know sister corona from the environment we want to put her inside the coffin and bury her very well before we get together so our government here in italy in particular have, have still not opened officially for us to be doing this kind of things and so 2022 by god's grace we are going to be holding graduation ceremony so if you graduate this year and you graduate next year it doesn't matter come and you would have a double uh, you know graduation for the year of 2020 year 2021 and year 2022 you work the out three times you know because the devil is a liar we have to celebrate those years very well so having said that i want us to be all equipped and be ready for um for it please let your cameras be on unless you are driving please let your cameras be on. let the lectures see you, let the lectures know you, and let them know that you are paying attention. So keep your cameras on when you come to class. Amen. With that being said, now let's invite our mama. We'll invite our, uh, our, our founder and president. You know, she's our mother. She's a mother to everyone. She's a mother to many, and, I, and she has been our uncle. She has been, you know, so many roles to us, and she's very vexed in the word. She hardly has time, and today I thought she would not make it, but we thank God she has. She's online with us, so I'm bringing her online. She is. Whose line is she on? Let me see. Which line? Okay, yours. Okay, let me bring her online. Yes. So please, let's welcome 
our mother mm -hmm. in the house, Her Royal mm -hmm. Grace, Archbishop Diana Ajate Eti. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. There she is. Welcome, Mom. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. Hallelujah. Everyone is muted, so actually they can't. Oh, okay. when they, Thank when they you. Talk, they can't. I'm happy to meet all of you. I made it. Thank <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. We appreciate the uh, meeting and especially our lecture. We want to thank God for all of us and for the purpose in our lives. I am here to let every Bible student understand that we have very due respect for all of you. You are called of God and you are already doing the things God asks you to do. You are here to become a masterpiece and to polish what you have. And so your lectures are wisely and prayerfully selected. We do not have on our board unexpected lectures. And so I would like to tell you a little about them. And we have Reverend Punke, which their denomination usually calls the senior pastor as pastor. We'll be learning all these things because it's not every church that takes all other titles. We have um, senior pastors that could be called apostles or bishops or whatever that we have in the hierarchy of the kingdom of God. But the, by their doctrine or denomination, they are called pastors. Because of late, it looks as if uh, people are running after titles and don't even know that uh, it has something to do with responsibility, duty, or denomination. And so those who are called pastors and God have even asked them to maintain the name pastors are compelled to change it into something like bishop or something to create the impression that maybe they are wild. But this is a Bible school and you'll be learning about all that. So we have our senior pastor, the founder, co-founder in the a husband in England, uh, Pastor Funke, who is supposed to be called Apostle or Bishop, and they maintain the title as pastors. She is a, a trained lawyer, and uh, she is in England, and she is here teaching you. I want you to understand that the people that are lecturing are not just people that, this is not church, this is school. And to certify you, we need to get people that are exposed and educated so that you can know that you are learning from the lineage. Jesus taught the disciples. And so that it is not right to be a preacher and you didn't learn. There is nothing wrong in not going to school. And so in GPS University, even those who can't read and write, even if you can't speak English, we still have a program for you. If you cannot write English very well, you just have to tell the, the, your lectures and you'll be recording whilst the preacher is preaching and then you can do extra by calling them to understand maybe some of the English words that they may use. We are down on there to make sure you become what God asks you to be. Mm -hmm. So it's not a place of, uh, um, it's not fun. And so um, I like to smile a lot, but I really want to give you the opportunity to know that we are here for very serious business for Christ. The Lord has called you to do something for him. And you need the information to know what to do. As Hosea said it in Hosea 4, Six, he said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. The word perish doesn't mean you die. But you are stagnant. You can't expand. And you are not exposed. 
a little primitiveness cost is very expensive. It's very expensive to be primitive. It's very, very expensive to be primitive. For example, the coronavirus that has come. You can hear people saying, God is on the throne, nothing will happen to us. But you are supposed to be educated about what is going on and do the necessary precautions. Some pastors have died because they choose not to wear masks. Education is part of God. God himself told us to learn. And Jesus came asking questions in the synagogue at the age of 12. He was asking reverend doctors, the Pharisees are reverend doctors who have gone to elite schools. He was asking these doctors questions and they were interrupting. For you to know that when Jesus was 12 years old, he did an intensive study. Starting the class with, that is the chapel, and did question and answers. So this thing of I am so anointed because you touch three people and they fell down in the road, or because you have so many followers on Facebook, it doesn't make you qualified. The danger of you having great followers and not having enough knowledge can cause you a lot of harm because the devil was there before you were born on earth. He's been around and he has no new tactics. The very trials and temptations he causes for people uh, six, we are almost in the 6,000 years ago. It's the same thing he's doing, but he seemed to always cause people to pray because he has the, the, the information and you are coming up with. The devil doesn't have any bad tricks. The way he tempted Joseph is the same way he's tempting everybody. Nothing new with the devil, but it is rather the, the devil having old tricks, applying them on new people. And so that makes him look like he's strong. He is not strong. He has limited knowledge, old tricks, application on new people. So if you are new, that is, if you are growing in the Lord, even if you are 100 years old, I want you to know the devil is 6,000 years old. And so you need to learn some things so that you'll be able to master his testing and his wicked acts. That's why we need to learn. And so this Bible school we have, that is the GPM Bible school, is not just coming to learn about the book of Romans, the book of Ephesians. No. I have been to Bible school in the Hosea's Bible School, and all these Bible schools give you the how to read. But one of the good things Papa did for us is that he taught us the practicality of the work, so that when you are posted on ground, you can operate and be successful. So we are going to teach practicality. We also have a lecturer that is uh, Reverend Michael, who is a banker, a banker. At times when you meet people in Europe and you see them doing simple work, you may not know their background, but we prayerfully selected people that are highly educated so that you will know that you, you are in safe hands. We heard Reverend Elect, uh, Pastor Ephraim, talking to us. Why is he a lecturer? Pastor Ephraim is going to minister to you, the pastor, making sure that your children will preach the gospel. That is a practical part of our work. Most of the time, we Africans relate to people by age. Oh, I'm older than him. I'm a living marriage. He is not yet married. And how does he lecture me? Let me tell you, if you want to really succeed as a preacher, Humble yourself and meet every lecturer with all reverence. What makes the pastor's children not want to do the work of God? We have so many pastors who 
whose children doesn't even read announcement in the church is a shameful thing, and I don't encourage that. Their children don't do anything with God's work. And they are more excited, say, no, my, my, my child is maybe a lawyer or a doctor or this. We are not taking those things to heaven. In as much as we have our academic compositives, we will have to make sure that we are doing the assignment that God gave us on earth. So I don't take delight in praising academic certifications, but I take delight in practical work on ground, achievement for the kingdom of God, souls for the kingdom of God. So he is going to be around so that every pastor who wants his children to grow up and bring the gospel, he will do the clues and the information and all the taxes that you need. He is also the founder of the JC, that is Youth uh, Festival. He's been running it for so many years, and Christmas children fly from all over the world and come to him and do a review in prayer, and they go back to stand with their parents. This is the purpose why we are doing this school, so that your child will not fail. Yeah. I'm talking about your child will not fail in the house of God. Yeah. Because in the house of God, many things happen. People do wonder. And like daddy, our father, he did uh, music engineering. Do you know that daddy is coming from a, a family background where they founded the Church of Pentecost and they broke away from Apostolic CAC and formed the Church of Pentecost during the time when the Father was forming the new dispensation church, which has now come to stay a very powerful church all over the world. There was physical fight in the chapels, and Daddy was around six to five years old, and the experiences he went through has also become one of the subject retreats. The pastor's children go through so much, they see how their parents are stabbed, betrayed, frustrated, and they do grow up and don't want to do anything with church. And so these experiences are very, very important. And we have them as our subjects and also as our questions for you to have the We also have Apostle Sam, who did business management. He's a business tycoon. And uh, alongside the things you are studying, when we have business conferences, he will be there to help you raise business. We have pastors doing business and flopping through because it, they pray in the spirit and pray in tongue and get into the market and yet they are Jewish. I remember one woman of God that went for a bank loan for 30,000 euros in Italy here, invested them and church people abused the opportunity and she's still paying that debt to today. You don't want to turn a prey to ignorance. So he is here as an apostle and he is a prophet by calling and he will also help you so that by the time you finish the school, if you want to open a business, he will help you to open your own business. Maybe you don't want to depend on tithes and offerings like Apostle Paul did. Peter wasn't bold, but Apostle Paul was a very bold preacher because he had his own tent business and he wrote a lot of books. It's not because Peter uh, uh, is not as powerful as Apostle Paul, but Peter had the money to write his books and tell you as it is. But Apostle Paul was in Jerusalem. Oh, sorry, Peter was in Jerusalem. Uh, Apostle Peter was in Jerusalem, seated with James, waiting for the tide of tides of the other churches. And therefore, his influence was not as powerful as Apostle Paul. Meanwhile, it is Peter that God called to be the stone upon whom he will use to expand the church. And so education, information, 
is extremely vital as a man of God. It's not everything you speak in tongues to get it done. If you want to speak in tongues and get things done, which means you are no more living in the body, you are in heaven. But so long as you are body, flesh, spirit, and soul, you will need the trio being to succeed on earth. The trio being, which is how the know how. The know how. This is important. How do I do this to get this done? What do I do? These are the things I'm talking about. Let me tell you. God will not do your part for you. God has his part. You have your part. It's very, very important. And so we are in the school to learn our part. And then God will do his part. He is ever ready to help us. What is our part? Moses, take the rod. Put it on the Red Sea and it will open. He, God didn't come down to touch the sea with his hands because he has left the physical things for the physical being. Even for Jesus to reach us and to talk to us, he has to be born by a woman. Thank God tomorrow is Mother's Day. Okay? So you cannot get into a bus and speak in tongues and tell the bus driver, Reke se tarabaha. I'm sitting down, drop me in Brescia. Amen. We don't have that. This is the planet A. And so you need the child information, the spirit information, the flesh information, and the soul information to be able to succeed. I have seen great men of God falling down and has now been beaten by dogs, playing with their choir members, having concubines, falling in love. And we are here to tell you it's on the way. When it starts, let us know. We will help you. Once you see somebody coming to the church, greeting you every day as a man, oh, daddy, good morning, daddy. Oh, I like your time. So that when the next Sunday you are going to church and you take a tie to wear, you think about Aunt Cecilia who spoke about your tie before you go and preach, you should know the road is very slippery. We have many strange things on this road and we would like to open up and give you the information to conquer, overcome, and become that which God has asked you to be. We have Apostle Stephanie, who is in charge of the whole unit. And she's a Dutch, a Nigerian who became a Dutch many years ago and has been posted to Ireland to take care of one whole unit of the nursing um, of, of the hospital. And so she is qualified to lecture us. She has also been a missionary who have traveled doing mission work over the years. We see her fit for the job. We have with us our director for the school, Pastor Christiana. Pastor Christiana did computer science. I am amazed about this child. It's not because I did them to her. When I sit down to do my work, I don't really look at my children as children. But I have never seen much ladies who finish school and just come to their parents to say, I want to do the work of God with you. Mama, I am not ready to go and look for a job. The work you are doing, employ me. I work with you. That is a miracle. I didn't beg her. I didn't ask her. It took me a long time to accept her. And then she will follow me, carry my bag, and anything that has to be in the news and to do magazines, she would put in what she learned at school. And she has been with us until eventually she has now taken up the most vital part of our latest dispensation where everything is now going into what? Electronics. So if you don't know how to use computer, look at how coronavirus have done. So you should see that here, not because she couldn't get a job to do. And I need to 
educate all of us. Pastors, get your children to do the work of God. Whatever they may be doing, let little, little things be done by them. Especially the little one. If your child is 10 years old, 5 years old, this is the time for you. Never talk about bad things that goes on in the church, in the house, for those children to hear and wake up and grow up and rebel. But build them up, get them ready to inherit what you want. And so, with this short exaltation, encouragement to all of you, letting you know that your lectures are well seasoned people. And uh, at our graduation, of course, we are going to have two or three more professors that will fly down to be part of this ceremony. I would want you to take a look at this scripture in Hosea chapter 6 before we close. Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. Hosea chapter 6 verse 4. Usually, the word of God is announced before it is read. This treasure or this culture has been buried for a long time now. We don't announce the word of God before we read it. So, if you are a Bible student, I want you to start. Um, where am I? Uzziah for this. This. Uzziah for this. Here comes the reading of the word of the Lord. I'm announcing the word. The word is so important that you have to introduce the word before you read. So I'm not just going to say Hosea 4 6. When I finish saying Hosea 4 6, I say, here comes the reading of the word of the So that the Here comes the reading of the word of the Lord. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. For lack of knowledge, because you, the priestly, have rejected knowledge, I will also reject you, that you shall no more be priest to me. Seeing you have forgotten the law of your God, I will also forget your children. Now, this scripture has very simple three major parts that I want to remind you of. When you don't learn, you get destroyed. The word destroyed here doesn't mean you will go to hell. But something precious in your hands, you lose them because you didn't have the tactics to handle the crisis you're going through as a pastor. So you need education so that you don't destroy an opportunity God will give. Number two, the Bible is telling us, the word of the Lord is telling us, we will be rejected by God because we didn't learn. Now, the word rejected by God doesn't mean you are going to hell or you go to heaven or God will not be with you. No. We have class of leadership. We'll be doing that. The heroes of leadership speak with leaders of nations. The pastors should come to a place where the mayor of your city can honor you. That's what it means. We have different grades and levels of leadership. If your leadership have to come to a high profile, you need information and education. So that is what this scripture means. My people are rejected. The word rejected simply means if they, if they need someone to come and pray, maybe for the nation, you will not be chosen. Another person is chosen for that. Look at Papa Idahosa. There is no president that will not call him to pray for him. He was not a rejected leader. 
so we can be local champions and do great things in the corners of our domains. But if you don't want to be rejected, when it comes to being called to a higher assignment, learn. Learn. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. Then, I'm not teaching. I'm just giving exhortation. So I cut it short by saying one of the hardest parts that breaks my heart is the last sentence. That says that God says he will forget your children because you didn't learn. What does it mean? It simply means you will not be able to have the grounds that will make your children recognize. You, you must work for the Lord to the extent that your children cannot be forgotten when you are dead and gone. So if the Bible says, I will also forget your children. It doesn't mean God will forget you. If you pray, you will not hear. He's talking about, I don't want to use the word fame, because people are going for juju to become famous as preachers. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about your works coming to stay to the extent that your children are remembered anywhere they go. And so God wants you to have knowledge, and in the midst of the knowledge, you will be able to bring your children to inheritance. That's what it means. You should be able to serve the Lord to the extent that your children will not be forgotten in the inheritance of the earth. So this is the scripture. The last one will be Psalm 11 verse 3. He says that if the foundation be destroyed, what, what will the righteous do? This scripture is very deep. Let me give just one light on it for you as students. Students, foundation simply means principles. If you miss the principles of life, your righteousness will be nothing. That's what it means. If the foundations be destroyed, what would the righteous do? Now, the righteous is supposed to be bold as a lion. The righteous is supposed to possess the land. The righteous is supposed to create inheritances. The righteous is supposed to do all that the righteous man ought to obtain on earth. But when you don't have a way of operating your fasting and your prayers doesn't have determined effect. That's what it means. What will the righteous do? If the foundation be destroyed, you, what will your righteousness do? It does nothing. It does nothing. That's what it means. Our righteousness must be effective. Our righteousness must be accurate. This scripture, if I want to explain it in another way, for example, you are righteous. And our foundation for marriage is that when you meet a person you want to marry and you are a pastor or you are, you are filled of the Holy Spirit, don't do fornication and go into the marriage. Walk pure and then you marry. Now, that becomes a principle and a foundation. You didn't do that. And then you played and both of you got married. This scripture is telling you that a time will come that kind of honor and respect that you needed as a man of God or as a woman of God from your house, from your house, before you get out there to preach, if it's not working, you can't do anything about it because you, you tempered with your foundation. I ask God to forgive you. You tempered with your foundation. There are some foundations 
or there are all foundations. If you don't handle your foundation well, you are building, but the building is crooked. We have pastors that didn't do traditional marriage, didn't pay dowry, and they are there screaming, casting out devils. You have a foundation that is not appropriate. We have pastors that are not Holy Ghost filled, are not even baptized, immersed in water. They got the opportunity to gather people in their preaching. And instead of them to go back and do repairs by trying to call family and say, I need to pay my dowry, they won't. These are the situations we came to. And in many parts of you, when God called the men of God, they were feeling too shy to do the repairs of their foundation. And they kept on building, and the buildings have all collapsed, and the righteous could not do anything about it. So when the Bible says the foundation be destroyed, what will the righteous do? It simply means that your righteousness has a lot to do with information and knowledge. And that if you are going to live as a primitive, uncivilized, uneducated, unknowledgeable person, you may be very, very righteous, but that righteousness will not take you anywhere. Righteousness simply means a learned person. It takes a righteous person to say, no, Joseph was very righteous and he knew He's not supposed to sin with Potiphar's wife. That is knowledge. So his foundation didn't get destroyed. His righteousness was built on holiness, and he became what he was born to be. So there is no shortcut in this journey. There is no there, there, there's no jumping off the stairs. You're going to walk with God. You're going to try hard to be righteous. Listen, if you have spirit of anger, impatience, and all these things, and you are not working on it, and yet you are wanting some extraordinary anointing to cast out devil, please, you will come to the place the enemy will embarrass you. So get the foundation right. Get your heart prepared. Be filled with holiness, righteousness, humility, and the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Then you can build. But anything that is not perfect will have a situation on the road. Remember, Jesus himself said it in Matthew 5 48 Be ye perfect, even as my Father is perfect. And so this school. It's not just to learn how to study the footprints of Paul and to read about the book of Ephesus and to have expositionary teachings on the quotations. It is a school. When you are finished, the enemy will not slay you. The devil will not put you in any place for you to lose your grounds. Your righteousness will be fortified. Your perfection will be intense and your principles will be in place. You will possess the gates of your enemies, not you alone, but with your entire family. Your church will be stronger and you will possess the land where God has put you. I declare everyone blessed. Amen. I thank you, students, for coming. You are great men and women of God. If we say students, it's just for the class. When we meet you in town, we will not call you, hey, student. We will call you reverend or pastor or whatever title you carry. But in the classroom, for just that one hour or two, you just make yourself like you are learning. I want to appreciate all our lectures. I want to thank you for your sacrifices and for the very tiny school fees that we have given. We've been on scholarship for years. We have, have been giving scholarship for the past how many years? And it is only this year, for the first time, we have asked students to pay so that our lectures can get a, gla a glass of water. You, we can never pay them. 
for what they are about to unleash on you. But I ask that since it is written that whoever lends to God, whoever borrows money to God, God pays back. I pray that your services will be recorded in the book of life and your due reward will be given to me in due season. God bless you all. Mm. Thank you. God bless you. Yes, thank you, Mary. God bless you very much. Um, we have uh, we have learned very deeply, and so I am very happy that we have come to a point. We are closing for today. I wanted us to do virtual exercises, but our time is fast spent. But it is spent in the presence of God. What I have learned today, I say every time Mommy teaches, and every time I someone um, expresses the word of God, I learn more and more each day we can never stop learning so we'll end um our class today over here and our virtual class we will do it next week god willing just prepare yourself that um each person if you look on your calendar again go back to our um our messenger and then you will find the calendar so you will know exactly what you are doing. For everyone who is here for the first time, you already know you are in year one, already as it is. And then um, year two students, I will let you also know the ones that are year two and then the ones that are year three as well. So next week we will do our virtual exercise. Amen. Amen. I would like um, for our, our apostle, to do the closing prayer for us as we close. Thank you very much. Uh, Apostle, you are muted, please. Father, we thank you for today. We give you praise, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you adoration. We thank you for the information that has come forth. Lord, as we go into the week, go with us. And every man and woman of God in school, as they go to their various church service tomorrow, let the heavens be open mm -hmm. in the precious name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Grant us all the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the ability to comprehend and receive information and to understand how to use this information we thank you we decree that no force from hell will stop anyone in school from completing in the name of jesus we give you praise we give you glory as we close today's school section we ask oh god that the grace of god will rest upon everyone and everyone will have a new testimony at the end of this school year. Thank you, Father, for making it possible today. We thank you for Mama. We thank you for the lecturers. We thank you for all the students. And we thank you for all their family. We cover all in the pool of the blood. And we decree that the enemy will touch none. So shall it be, even as we have decreed and prayed in Jesus' precious name. In amen. Jesus' precious name, we pray thanksgiving. Amen. 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 All right. So we can all log out now. If you want to, we have um, Mama Angie in the house. This lady is a dynamic woman. And for anyone who wants to log out, you are free to log out right now. We finished the class. We have Mama Angie online. She is known, um, she's a pastor's wife and she does, um, you know, catering and decoration. And so you will see her handiworks if you go on her, on her, um, you, um, I was going to say YouTube, Facebook, by God's grace. We have um, Pastor Richard online. He, he has been asked, um, have his own church where he was assisting. Right now, he's a founding pastor in his own ministry. We have Pastor Elvis. Pastor Elvis has had his ministry for years now. He too is here. We, every person, every student here is a man or woman of God who has their own ministry, doing their own business. And then we have... Um, I can see Vivian Johnson online. I can see uh, Minister Gifts. Minister Gifts is from Reverend 
Michael's Church, one of the ministers over there. God bless you. We have, um, um, who else do we have? Uh, we have uh, our pastor, Pastor Elizabeth, the residing pastor in Iowa, USA. This woman is a dynamic woman. I don't know which activity she's not involved in. Charity, business, motherhood, uh, care sharing, caregiving. The business is plate. It goes on and on. I don't know how she does it all by herself, but she's a very industrious woman. God bless her. We have uh, Pastor Isaac online. Um, these are all year, two, year three students who are doing their um, bachelor's this year. Um, who else do we have online? I think some of them have jumped, have logged off. We had uh, Sonja online. I think she too, she's from the U.S., branch thank you all for coming god bless you very much and i appreciate you next week when you are coming online you will just see three different classes and according to the class you are placed in you just hop on and you meet your lecturers over there god bless you all bye 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 bye, bye.